Moving over to the next infection that is varicella zoster virus infection. Etiological agent, it is caused by varicella virus which is a double stranded DNA virus belonging to the herpes virus family. Mode of infection, again it is similar to, to the other viruses we have discussed. It mostly occurs through close contact and respiratory infection or droplet root is the common mode of infection. The incubation period described in textbooks is 10 to 21 days, usually 14 to 16 days, median value is taken. So median value is approximately 14 to 16 days. However, if you asked a range in MCQ exam, this is what was asked in one of the older questions, the answer will be 10 to 21 days. And what is the maximum period of infectivity? The period of infectivity is 24 to 48 hours before rash till all the lesions have crusted. So, crusting of lesions denotes that the patient is no longer infective. These children who develop chicken pox, we do not allow them to go to school till their lesions have crusted. All the lesions have crusted and only lesions are coming. There is a problem of latent infection in patients with varicella zoster virus. Latent infection can occur during the incubation period or it can occur during the clinical disease. The virus is transported in a retrograde manner through sensory exons to the dorsal root ganglia and to the cranial nerve ganglia as well. Remember, virus lies and sleeps in the ganglionic neurons. It does not exist in non-ganglionic exons or neurons. Viremia can also contribute to latent infections. Later on, subsequent reinfection can cause herpes zoster in later life. Now coming to the clinical features of varicella zoster virus, how chickenpox comes. After incubation period of 10 to 21 days, initially there is moderate grade fever, there is headache and anorexia which is called as the prodromal symptoms. 24 to 48 hours later, there is onset of rash. Rash progresses in a very typical manner. There is initially a macule, in a few days it turns into papule, then it forms a fluid filled lesion called vesicle and eventually it heals by crusting. This is the typical example of how the lesions tend to appear. And the vesicles which are present, they are filled with a clear fluid with surrounding pink red erythema. These vesicles, this description of vesicles given in textbooks is as dew drops on rose petal appearance. Gulab ke patto par os ki bunde. Hindi translation, literal translation. English translation, I have already written here. Dew drops on rose petal appearance. Typically, how older people in the 1800s and early 1900s, the rash of varicella chickenpox has been described. These days, the studies are a bit more bland. Earlier, the studies, although the means were limited, but uh, even the explaining, treating physicians, pediatricians, they were a bit more poetic than what we have today. So, dew drops on rose petal appearance, if you find the terminology, it is used for patients with chicken pox. Now, regarding the rash, this rash has certain characteristics, the key words which you need to identify in exam. First of all, it is a very itchy rash. So, it is a pruritic rash. Significant pruritis is present. Measles and rubella rash are usually non-pruritic and so they were not mentioned. It is a very itchy rash. Secondly, it is a centripetal rash. Centripetal rash means it begins in the trunk, later spreads to face as well as spreads to limbs. So, starts from the center and spreads to the peripheries. And these lesions tend to occur in crops. A lot of lesions will occur on one day in a limited area, then another region one day later, another crop of lesion will appear. So, it occurs in crops and the same patient may have different lesions in different morphology. What it means is, suppose I am a child with a chicken pox, today I had macules 8 or 10 macules occurring here. Three days later, these macules will turn into papule. But now, new crop of lesion will come here. Okay, this will be macular, this will be papular. Then, this will, another one or two days, it will turn into vesicle. 
this will now turn into papule another lesion group of lesion will appear here or on the proximal limbs so if you see on day 5 or day 6 i will have macules present here papules present here and vesicles present here so different type of lesion present in the same person is again a clinical clue for the child having varicella and lastly the rash tends to resolve each group of uh, vesicles tend to resolve with crusting and crusting usually occurs between 3 to 7 days for each crop and usually 2 to 3 crops come and then around 7 days or so 7 to 8 days we say the chicken pox tends to settle down again it is variable some children may show very mild uh, one or two crops only and some may have extensive rash occurring all over the body the general rule is younger the child milder is the infection older the child more severe is the infection and uh, they usually do not heal with uh, any pigmentation some post inflammatory scars may be left scarring is more in adolescents and adults as compared to children so you can just write as a point somewhere to remember that scars are more common in case of adults as compared to children but overall they are considered to be rare now moving to the complications one of the complications the photograph is already mentioned we will come to this first of all the most common complication of chicken pox is secondary bacterial infections mainly involving gram positive bacteria like staph aureus and streptococcus pyogens cns uh, complications are also common the common one among them is acute cerebellar ataxia on which mcq has been asked they can also develop meningoencephalitis purpura fulminans can develop in which large purpuric bullae are present over the body it occurs due to antibody against protein c which tends to form in certain individuals and rarely stroke and ray syndrome can develop in these patients finally latent infection and reactivation can cause herpes zoster herpes zoster is more common in adults as compared to children the virus which had hidden in the ganglia sometimes gets activated due to stress due to changes in the immune status due to some drug being taken some changes occurring in the environment of the patient many times no precipitating factor can be found there is reactivation of the virus and it produces a dermatomal rash this dermatomal rash which is painful it is described as a burning kind of pain and tends to heal with scarring is seen with herpes zoster fortunately herpes zoster responds to acyclovir but unfortunately herpes zoster has a tendency to recur after every few years again it varies from person to person when it would recur treatment of uh, chickenpox drug of choice where you need to give is acyclovir however acyclovir is not needed in most patients as we shall see the dose of acyclovir is 20 mg per kg per dose orally given four times a day for five days ideally started within 24 hours of the onset of rash iv therapy is indicated for severe disease and for varicella occurring in immunocompromised patients acyclovir therapy is not recommended routinely by american academy of pediatrics in a otherwise healthy child so only in older children more than 12 years or pregnant females or people with immunosuppression they are the ones where you will use acyclovir acyclovir resistant vzv is a problem in hiv positive individuals there you need to use iv foscarnet and if iv foscarnet fails you need to go in for iv sidofovir so in resistant patients the sequence is acyclovir foscarnet and sidofovir points to remember in chicken pox aspirin is contraindicated due to risk of raise syndrome ibuprofen is also contraindicated due to risk of necrotizing for fasciitis it is a potential mcq so remember any child who has varicella you need to give any antipyretic for fever only paracetamol that is acetaminophen is indicated progress varicella is seen in immunocompromised patients pregnant females and sometimes even normal people including children adolescents and adults progressive varicella is associated with recurrent crops of new lesions which are extensive in nature plus there is onset of severe systemic involvement leading to encephalitis myocarditis and similar complications 
and they usually have a high mortality. Fortunately, it is seen in less than 0.5% of the individuals. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.